Hello everyone. On this video we will be looking at the Pythagorean Theorem again and an introduction to what we call special right triangles. Okay, So just a little recap. Remember that an acute triangle have all angles less than 90 degrees and really you can look at them and tell when they're less than 90 degrees. All the angles are pretty small. They're not 90 degrees. An obtuse angle, I have at least one angle that's greater than 90 degrees. So you can see that that angle is bigger than 90 degrees. You can see that this angle is bigger than 90 degrees. And then you have what we're going to be spending most of our time on, well, all of our time in this section, the right triangle which has a 90 degree angle. And you can usually tell the 90 degree angle if they don't have 90 degrees there, you'll see the little square in the corner. That's your 90 degree angle. Okay, and just a little reminder. All the interior angles, if you add up all the angles inside of a triangle, it equals 180 degrees. of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. All right, so if you are still writing, feel free to press pause, but we're gonna go ahead and move on to our next page. which will look at the parts of a right triangle. Okay. Now, of course, on the previous page, you see that right there, you notes your right angle, the little square in the corner. That's your 90 degree angle. So let me put 90 degrees right there. Okay, now, the two legs connected to the right angle, call that leg A and leg B, or you can call this one leg B and leg A. It really does not matter which one you make A and which one you make B. The only one that you cannot switch up, and it always has to be the case, is the side that's opposite your 90 degree angle. And that's your leg C or your hypotenuse. Okay, and in this case, or in this triangle, the side opposite your 90 degree angle is your leg C or your hypotenuse. Okay, so you can switch up legs A and B. It doesn't matter which one you make A and which one you make B. But your leg C is always going to be your hypotenuse. Okay, which gives us our Pythagorean theorem. Which is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now, if you're going to solve for each leg, okay, let's say if you wanted to solve for C. Well, this is C squared, but if you square root both sides, the square and the square root cancels out, so you just get C. So to solve for side C, that's going to equal the square root of A squared plus B squared. Now, if you wanted to solve for side B, you subtract A squared from both sides, then square root. So B would equal the square root of C squared minus A squared. And if you wanted to solve for leg A, you subtract B squared from both sides, so you get A squared equals C squared minus B squared, 
and square root both sides. So a is going to equal the square root of c squared minus b squared. Okay, so this is your Pythagorean theorem, but this is how you will solve for each individual leg. Okay, now quick note about the Pythagorean theorem. They don't always use A, B, and C. Okay, A, B, and C are not always used. Okay. Sometimes you may see the Pythagorean theorem as x squared plus y squared equals z squared. Okay. Or sometimes you may see them as x squared plus y squared equals d squared. Okay. So further down the line when you see the distance formula You'll see this. Okay. You may even see a squared plus b squared equals r squared or something like that. Literally, the letter, the variable used does not matter at all. If you're looking for the Pythagorean theorem to use on a right triangle, it could be any variables at all. It, the, the letter used makes no difference. As long as you understand the concept of the Pythagorean theorem and your leg A and B or your leg X and Y, it doesn't matter what variables are used. So I don't want you to get confused if you happen to see different variables or different letters used for the same thing. It's the same thing. All right. So if you are still writing, feel free to press pause and finish up. But we're going to go ahead and move on to our examples. Okay, so what if you wanted to find the missing side of the triangles and you round it to one decimal place? Okay, so for this right triangle, you have three inches on this side, four inches, two inches on this side, and this side is unknown, so we'll call that C. You have the hypotenuse of 6.5 centimeters. This leg is 5.6 centimeters, and this side is unknown. Okay, so what if, since we know they're both right triangles, we know we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay, now we know that our hypotenuse is opposite the right angle. Okay, so that means either one of these can be A and either one of these can be B. So we'll let A equals 2 and B equals 3. Or you could let A equal 3 and B equal 2. Does not matter at all for those two. For A and B, it doesn't matter one bit. Okay, so we're solving for C. So C is equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared. So that means it's going to be equal to the square root of a squared, which is 2 squared, plus b squared, which is 3 squared. Okay, so 2 squared is 2 times 2. So that's going to equal the square root of 4, plus 3 squared is 3 times 3. So it's going to be 9. So 9 plus 4 is 13. So this is going to equal the square root of 13. You plug that into your calculator, you get 3.6 inches. All right, and that's your rounded value. All right, so what about B? Okay, now with B, what I want you to do is press pause and solve for this missing side on your own. All 
All right, so I'm assuming you've already pressed pause and worked that one out. So let's go ahead and verify. Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick sketch of that graph. So 6.5, 5.6. Oh, let me move this up some. There we go. And this is our unknown. Since it's one of the legs connecting your right angle, it can be either A or B. And yeah, we call it B. Okay, so we know it's a right triangle, so we're going to use A squared plus B squared equals C squared. But we're solving for side B. So B equals the square root of C squared minus A squared. Okay, so here we know that the side opposite our right angle is our C. So we have C equals 6.5. And we have A is equal to 5.6, which is this leg here. Okay, so we go ahead and plug those in. So B is going to equal the square root of C squared. So that's 6.5 squared minus A squared, which is 5.6 squared. Okay, so 6.5 squared is just 6.5 times 6.5. So that is 42.25 minus 5.6 squared, which is 5.6 times 5.6, which is 31.36. Okay, so 42.25 minus 31.36 is 10. 8.9. And if you plug in the square root of 10.89, you will get 3.3 .3 centimeters. Now, that's not the rounded answer. That's your actual answer. It will be 3.3. .3. All right. So if you're still writing this, feel free to pause it and finish up and get everything down. But we're going to go ahead and move on to our next page, which shows us special right triangles. Okay, now we have three special right triangles. The first triangle is the 45, 45, 90 triangle. That's because the angles inside the triangle are 45 degrees, 45 degrees, and 90 degrees. And the sides are one, one, and square root of two. Now it could be one inch, one inch, square root of two inches. It one in, one foot, one foot, square root of two feet, it doesn't matter. It's just one, one, and square root of two. Okay, now this triangle is called the 30, 60, 90 triangle. That's because the angles inside are 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees. And the sides are one, square root of three, and a hypotenuse of two. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and scroll it up. And the third special right triangle is the 37, 53, 90. That's because this side oh, is approximately 37 degrees. It's 37 degrees and some change. This side, is this angle is approximately 53 degrees. And this one is 90 degrees. And your sides are 3, 4, and 5. So you have the angles 37, 53, and 90, and your sides 3, 4, and 5. So these are the three special right triangles. And we're going to use these to answer a few questions. But before we do, you have to be able to identify the opposites of your angles. This is very important if you're going to use the 30, 60, not the 30, the special right triangles. Okay. So for the 1, 1 square root of 2 triangle, if you notice this angle here, this 45 degree angle, the opposite side is this side one here. But for this 45 degree angle, the opposite is this side here. Now, if you look at the 30, 60, 90 triangle, for the 60 degree angle, the opposite side 
is square root of 3. If you look at the 30 degree angle, the opposite side is your 1. Okay, we already know the opposite side of the 90 degree angle is the hypotenuse. But if you look at the opposite of the 53 degree angle here, the opposite side is 4. If you look at the 37 degree angle here, the opposite side is 3. Okay, it's very, you don't have to memorize these, but it's very important that be, you be able to identify the opposite side of an angle. Okay, it, it, this is all how it works out with this particular group of right triangles. All right. So if you're still writing, feel free to press pause, but we're going to go ahead and move on to our first set of examples. Okay, so what if we want to find the missing values without using the Pythagorean theorem and we round to the nearest tenth? Okay, now here if you notice, you can't use the Pythagorean theorem because you have two missing sides. Okay, so you couldn't use the Pythagorean theorem here if you wanted to. Okay, but let me show you how those special triangles will help out. Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick sketch of this one. Okay, so you have B, you have C, you have 4 inches, you have 30 degrees, you have 60 degrees here. Just a quick sketch of this triangle. Okay. Now, if you notice, it kind of looks like our special right triangle, our 30, 60, 90. Okay, you have 30, 60, 90. You have 1, square root of 3, and 2. Okay, so the only thing that's different is this is 1 and this is 4, but that can be changed. So what do we do? We multiply each side by 4. Okay, so if we multiplied all of these by 4, we will end up with... Let's see, I'm just going to redraw 30 and 60. 1 times 4 is 4. 2 times 4 is 8. Square root of t, 3 times 4, we just put 4 square root of 3 for now. Okay, so we notice this. We have 4 here, and we have 4 here. So that means we can figure out the rest of these based off that. Okay, so side B, we see that's 4 square root of 3. If we plug that into the calculator, it's about 6.9 inches. And what about side C, our hypotenuse? If you see here, our C is equal to 8, both sides of our hypotenuse. So our C is equal to 8 inches. Okay, so that's how you use the special triangle. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to press pause and answer B the same way. So go ahead and press pause and try that one on your own. All right, so I'm assuming you've paused it. So let's go ahead and verify. If you notice here, we just wanted to make our special triangle and manipulate it a little bit so we could match up the sides. All right, so let's look at B. And again, I'm just going to do a quick sketch of it. Nothing fancy. Okay, so we have this is T, this is E, this is F, our hypotenuse is 6 centimeters. And this is 30 degrees. Okay, well, look closely, it kind of looks like 
You have a 30 here, you have a 90 here. Kind of looks like our 30, 60, 90 triangle. 30, 60. Okay, now I want you to look at this. I'm going to go to the previous page just for a second. You see our 30, 60, 90 triangle right here. What's across, if you notice, the opposite of the 30 degrees is the 1. So no matter how this triangle is flipped, the opposite of the 30 degree angle will be your 1. The opposite of your 60 degree angle is your square root of 3. So your 60 degree angle, the opposite is your square root of 3. And the opposite of your 90 degree angle is your hypotenuse. Okay. Now, they look similar, except this is a 6 and this is a 2. Well, how do we do that? Well, we just multiply this by 3. Multiply each side by 3. Okay, so if you notice, I'm just going to redraw it. There we go. We have our 60 degree, our 30 degree. But we're going to multiply each of the sides by 3. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times square root of 3, we'll just put 3 square root of 3 for right now. So you notice you have your 6 here and your 6 there. So that means your E would equal 3. Your T, your angle T, would equal 60. 60 degrees. And your side F would equal 3 square root of 3. But if you plug that into a calculator, square root of 3 times 3, you get 5.2 centimeters. All right, so that's how you would use your special right triangle. All right, so if you're still writing, feel free to press pause, but we're going to go ahead and move on to our next set of example. There we go. Trying to make sure, yep, got my page here. Okay. So we want to find the missing values without using the Pythagorean theorem. Okay. okay, so you have for this triangle, you have M, you have N, you have T, you have 53, 37, and 0 0.5 inches. And for this triangle, you have 2.01, 4.02, X, angle A, and angle B. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to press pause and try both of these on your own. All right, so I'm assuming you have pressed pause already. So let's go ahead and verify your answer. For A, I'm going to go ahead and just redraw it. You have T, you have 37. You have 53, you have N, you have M, and you have 0 0.5 inches. Okay. Now, this is angle 37, angle 53. Kind of looks like you have. 37 degrees, 53 degrees here, 3, 4, and 5. Okay. Now, if you look and compare, okay, 
you know where the 3 goes because if you look at angle 37, the 3 is opposite from angle 37. So you knew that the 3 went there. Angle 53, the opposite of angle 53 is 4. So from angle 53, you knew the 4 went there. And the 5 is opposite the right angle or your hypotenuse. Okay. Well, the only difference is this is 5 and this is 0.5. Okay. Well, one way to figure out what to multiply by this to get 0.5 is to write it out like this. 5 times some unknown value equals 0.5. If we divide both sides by 5, we get x equals 0 0.5 divided by 5, which is 0 0.1. Okay, so we multiply each side by 0 0.1. Okay, so if we do that, just going to re draw it. We have 37 and our 53 degree angles here. Okay, 5 times 0 0.1 is 0 0.5. 3 times 0 0.1 0 0.3. 4 times 0 0.1 is 0 0.4. Okay, so now we have everything we need. This is 0 0.5, this is 0 0.5. N and our three, so we know that N is equal to 0.3 inches. This side matches up with this side, so our M is equal to 0.4 inches. And our angle T is right in the spot of our right angle. So we know that T is equal to 90 degrees. Okay, so what about problem B? Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick sketch of it. We have x, 2.01, 4.02, angle A, and angle B. Okay, now if you notice, It looks like our 30, 60, 90 triangle. This is 1, 2, square root of 3. How do I know it looks like that? If you pay attention to the two sides that they gave you, 4.02 is double 2.01. 2.01 times 2 is 4.02. So if you have 1 here, 1 times 2 is 2. So if you get this number here and multiply it by 2, you get this. If you get this number here and multiply it by 2, you get your hypotenuse here. So sometimes you have to think about it a little bit. All right. I mean, 2.01. I'm sorry. You have to multiply each side by 2.01. 2.01 times 2.01 is 4.02. I didn't say, I said 2. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to multiply each side by 2.01. Okay, which will give us the same thing we're going to do, we did here, we matched them up once we did. We're going to do that here. So we're going to do a quick sketch. We have our 30 and our 60. 2.01 times 1 is 2.01. 2.01 times 2 is 4.02. Okay, and 2.01 times square root of 3, we're just going to make that 2.01 times square root of 3 for right now. Okay, so we can see here our 2.01. Matches this 2.01. Our 
our 4.02 matches this 4.02. And our x matches this side. So we know our x equals 2.01 times square root of 3, which rounds to about 3.48 centimeters. Now our angle A, you see that our angle A matches this 60 degrees. So A equals 60 degrees. And we see that our angle B matches this 30 degrees. So B is equal to 30 degrees. Okay, so that is how we would use our special right triangle to solve specific problems like this. All right, so hopefully this made sense and I'll see you on the next video.